Hello, I'm Michael and in today's video we're going to focus on night photography. I'm currently on Lefkada and what you see there behind me is the Lefkada lighthouse which is a beautiful subject to photograph for sunset normally but as you can also see again there are no clouds in the sky which makes this the perfect opportunity to do some night photography and in this video I'm going to show you how I prepare this shoot so how I plan it how I scout it and then also we're going to talk about the technicalities of the shoot but first let's talk about the planning so we switch over to the office and I show you which apps I use to plan this night photography shoot so for the planning of my night photo shoots I like to use a software called planet pro which you see I have it currently open here on my cell phone and this software is pretty powerful and yeah, perfect to plan Milky Way shoots for example so here you see a current planning I have but I'll now walk you through how to create a planning or how I created the planning for the Lefkada lighthouse shoot. So first of all up here you see there are four little squares if you click on them you get a list of all the different plannings you can do and for this shoot I want to photograph the Milky Way so I've selected the Milky Way here for the planning and now to create a new planning I click up here on the hamburger menu scroll down here you see the plans and I just click on the icon to create a new plan so I release the camera scene pins I reset the time to now um, which I don't need because I want to set another day so I don't want to plan for today so this is something I do manually click on new up here where it says plan one I can give it a name but will not bother with that so the first thing and I want to do is I click down here and I want to set the date so the date I was or I want to shoot it is Wednesday June 22nd press OK and here I can then also switch the time and you see also already for this planning here for this other location you see this green area here that's the visualization of the Milky Way and you see how it moves across the sky and it moves across the southern sky but first what we now have to do we have to find the Lefkada lighthouse and since I know where it is I just do it manually so here on the side you can zoom out then just scroll over go to Lefkada zoom in a bit and find the right area this area by the way I found it via location scouting I do with Google Maps so this location is marked so down here it's even here in this app the map data that's using also shows this little camera sign which tells me that's the photo spot and that's also how it's marked on Google Maps so I zoom in very closely so I will likely as you saw I have set up my camera somewhere up here on those rocks and then when I hover over this area what I go to is to this plus sign here brings up this menu and there's a sign here saying set the camera location and I press on it so now I place the pin for the camera location the next thing which is also very helpful is you can set additional pins for example if I go down here to where the lighthouse is just hover over lighthouse click again on the plus there's also set the scene location and I'll show you what those pins help you to do later so you can even set additional pins so if you have some mountains which you see on this map you can give it additional markers and those will later show up when you switch over to the virtual reality view and this virtual reality view we'll look at it in a second this helps you pre-visualize how the photo might look and also how the Milky Way is located relative to your scene but first we have to set a focal length so let's click here on this focal length and say okay here in this drop down we want to set the focal length of the lens now you see here those green lines and I can move them around or I can click here on focal length and just select that I want to shoot it at 15 millimeters I set the orientation to portrait and now I have as you can see here this gray line which is pointing from the camera position 
towards the lighthouse. You see this? It's sitting roughly in the center of this area. So now that we have set up the planning, let's also go to the part where the Milky Way is also in the center. This is now also how I check if it's even possible to shoot the lighthouse as I want with the Milky Way. So I can just scroll here through the night and see how the Milky Way moves across the sky. And now here at 436 you see how the color changes a bit, it gets brighter. It means it's already close to the end of astronomical twilight. So at this time the night sky will start to light up. So it's not ideal. So it's already getting a bit bright into blue hour. But from my experience this is still dark enough to capture a lot of stars in the sky. But if you get closer here to sunrise 430 you see the sky is getting too bright and also the Milky Way fades and is no longer visible. Now you see there would be sunrise. And this is also important. You see here the orange lines, sunrise, sunset, and then the blue lines which tell you how or where the moon is rising. This is also important when you want to shoot the night sky. You have to make sure that the moon will not be anywhere in your field of view when you want to photograph the stars and at best nowhere near it. A few weeks earlier when I was on Crete I also thought about capturing the Milky Way. Problem then was the moon was directly in the same position as the Milky Way at the time I wanted to photograph it. But here it's fine. You see here the moon is just coming in here at a 90 degree angle. It's also not even half a moon. So there's not so much light. I get a bit of light but I guess this will give me a nice satellite for the foreground even but it's not too bright. I'll still have enough stars and that's very important to know. So you see the moon will be in the scene only long after sunrise. So no problem here. Okay so now I've set this to like 4.30. The next thing I want to do is now pre-visualize what I've set up here. So I click down here on this little icon and you have here a few options. One option is the viewfinder VR and that's what we want to use now. The AR would be what you can use if you're in the field. So this is usually where I like to use Photopulse because it has a better augmented reality modus. But here for the virtual reality I like to use Planet. And now you see it's building up the scene for me. Um, usually if you're making a planning for a new location it will download some terrain data because if you have mountains in the scene you will even see those. But here you get a nice impression and you can also move the camera around now. And what you see here it's very small. There's a little red pin. So I'm not sure if you can see it here in the way I'm filming this. But this red pin is the marker I set for the scene. And that's also why it's important to use those pins because otherwise you would have no idea based on the terrain which is kind of flat. So we have cliffs here but they don't show up so much in this terrain map. So without this marker I wouldn't know where the lighthouse is. And now I can move around the camera a bit, position the lighthouse, the scene in the middle also. I can say okay I want to point my camera more upwards having the lighthouse sit somewhere at the lower third. And now when I move around here the time you see how the Milky Way slowly comes into place and then here at this point so 445 it's right behind the lighthouse. So also see where the Milky Way center will be and then it moves past. So I reckon the best time to photograph my images of the night sky is between 430 and 5 because afterwards getting too bright. Then I should have the Milky Way behind my scene and yeah, get a nice shot. So yeah that's how I like to plan my night shoots. So I can now be sure the Milky Way is in the right place. And what I also shouldn't forget is to scout this. So such a planning is nice to have but for night shoot it's also very important to actually see what the scene looks like, how the cliffs look like and get a real idea 
how you can take a photo there, find the foreground, stuff like that. So we're gonna switch over to that part now. So now I showed you the planning and you saw I like to use Planet Pro to get an idea where the Milky Way will be and I use the virtual reality view there, which I like a lot for planning. Now I'm here doing the scouting and as you've learned from many other videos I did about scouting, one thing I like to do scout well before the shoot when I still enough light, especially for a night shoot. And what I do, I either walk around with my cell phone or with the camera and try to find compositions, which is very important if I later want to set up in the dark. So I already found a composition, which both works for a vertical and a horizontal shot. So having those rocks here in the foreground to give a little bit of a framing to the shot, then those cliffs leading to the lighthouse and the Milky Way will actually be directly behind the lighthouse. So at five o'clock in the morning, hopefully either tomorrow or the day after, I'll take the shot. And now I also want to show you what else I do for the planning. So in the field, I like to use not Planet Pro, but Photo Pulse. And with Photo Pulse, if I go to the planner, there's the augmented reality view. And this augmented reality view for the night vision allows me to get kind of a live pre-visualization of how the photo would look. So I can just go in, point my cell phone into this direction and I show you a screenshot now. And then I can just pull my finger over the display. And when I'm at five o'clock, I see the Milky Way appearing directly behind the lighthouse, which gives me a good pre-visualization of the photo I want to take. So that's very handy. Also, I can use this live view or this preview to double check that there's no moon in the frame. I already checked this with Planet, but it's always good to double check where the moon's actually setting or rising. But for those days, I'm fine. So I won't have too much light from the moon. Also here, it's pretty dark. There's no town in that direction, only some islands far off into the distance. So it should be pretty dark here. So perfect conditions for night photography, especially with the clear skies, which are forecast for the next few days. If I get clouds, well, I can still do a sunrise shoot or a sunset shoot, but I think this time it's really a night shoot. So I now show you the scouting shot, which I took and also marking this place on the map. It's not really necessary because the parking lot is right behind the camera. So it's really easy to get here. But if it was a more remote spot, I'd use this scouting also to check out where I park my car, how to hike to the actual photo location from the car, make sure that I'm safe also, then mark the spot so I know exactly where to set up. Because I had this in the past where I returned to a spot in the dark and yeah, I just couldn't find it. Even if it was just 10 meters off, I couldn't find it. So that's something you should do if it's yeah more difficult to get to. But for this spot, it's pretty straightforward and easy. Okay, so that's it for the scouting part. Next, either tomorrow or the day after, we're gonna do the actual shoot. I'm not yet sure how I'm gonna film it. Maybe I film it after the fact, but I'll have a few more tips for you about camera settings and stuff like that. So yeah, let's switch over to that part now. So it's now the morning of the shoot. It's been two days since I scouted this place. See my camera set up, I've already taken the photos couldn't film it because it was too dark. I don't have the right equipment, but yeah, I th think it's okay that I now talk you through all the settings and you see me holding my cell phone because I have a list here, so I don't forget anything. It's quite a few settings, but yeah, you can develop a routine so you don't forget anything. So let's first start with the composition. As I said, I scouted this composition. You've seen it. I usually defer a bit from the typical final composition when I shoot the night sky. You see me pointing the camera slightly upwards. I always do this to include more sky. So when I take the photos for the sky, camera typically points up. So the landscape usually takes up the lower third of the frame and I have two thirds for the sky. Even if later for the final image, I want more foreground, I do this when I shoot the night sky. I can then angle the camera down for the final image. So adjusting the composition and create a virtual rama if I want. With a clear sky, something like this can be done very easily. 
can be easily blended so there's not even the need for some panorama software you can just do some easy blending in photoshop so i always do this with the composition next let's talk about the focal length i use as i said already with the composition i want to have a lot of sky in it that's also why i use 15 millimeters with this 15 to 35 lens and i always use this because at this focal length this lens the rf 1535 is at the sharpest when i shoot the stars so the least comma is present and if i zoom in a bit i sometimes get the stars to look a little awkward so i keep it like that even if i later for the final image use something between 15 and 20 millimeters which is typical for the wide angle scenes of the night sky i shoot i can easily blend it same as with the Voturama. Clear sky blends easily with the foreground, even if I later do some focal length blend. So that's something I do. I keep this at 15 millimeters. You should test your lenses. If you have a fixed lens, this might even be better than you anyway have just one focal length. So yeah, do some tests and see that the lens or where the lens shows the least comma, the least artifacts in the stars. Now, the next thing is the exposure time. So. Remember, I'm at 15 millimeters and what I want is, let me, I'm always pointing into this direction as if there were stars, so there were the stars, but now there's nothing. But what I wanted was the night sky to be filled with pinpoint stars. So no movement, no star trails. And to achieve this, I have to calculate an exposure time that's short enough to give me that. And I use the so-called NPF rule for that. And in PhotoPulse, you can, switch to some calculator where you can just insert the focal length and everything and it gives you the exposure times which for me by uh, for 15 millimeters is 7.3 or something and i usually use eight seconds for the canon which i tested and it's very good for pinpoint stars at 15 millimeters if you would use the 500 rule you would get something above 30 th seconds and this is in my opinion worthless if you want to print because you always see movement in the stars it's good for instagram and stuff but if you want to print use the npf rule and also set it to precise in photopulse if you use that software now with the exposure time out of the way next thing is the aperture i use f 2.8 the widest this lens can go it would be ideal if i could go even wider so if you have some lens which does 1.4 or f 1.8 this is even better because it allows you to use lower isos that's the next setting i use isos between yeah iso 3200 and 6400 typically otherwise i don't see enough stars so this morning i was shooting at 6400 so that's quite a high iso even for the canon r5 and there's a lot of noise present so how can i deal with that noise one solution would be if i had a star tracker i could use that device mounted here between tripod and camera and it would yeah, move the camera so it follows the stars so i can do very long exposures and yeah, not or still get pinpoint stars i don't have this device i like to travel lightly so what i do i use image averaging which means i take many photos between 20 and 40 photos with the same settings and I later use a software called Star Stacker to average those. The stars will be pinpoints or point stars, but the noise will be averaged out of the frame. And I get an image that looks like it was shot with ISO 100 or ISO 200. It's really fascinating and a great way to clean up your images. So you don't need fancy software like a Star Stacker for that. If you have a clear skies without any clouds, that's an easy thing to do. Now, let's see what's the next thing we dealt with north we have everything we take all the photos i use a cable release here and i have the camera set to continuous mode so i hold down shutter it takes one photo after another for this to work i have to deactivate long exposure noise reduction that's important otherwise it will also always take a dark frame i don't want this i want to get the photos in pretty quickly what I don't want to forget though is the end of the sequence, put on the lens cap, take one final image, a dark frame. 
with all the settings left and I can use this dark frame, I have a video on that, to remove any hot pixels and all those images I took in the complete sequence and that's important. Then I have clean images for the night sky. Now I wait like one hour because taking those photos now here I took it at between 4 and 5 in the morning so I could just wait for blue hour and then take the photos for foreground, middle ground and background even do focus stacking. For this I go to the lowest ISO, ISO 100, f9.5, 10 to 30 second exposures and get a clean shot and the blue hour shots usually blend very easily with the night sky so in my start to finish tutorial about photographing or editing night photos I show exactly how I do this also how I use the star stacker software so yeah, if you're interested check that out so I have all the photos also as I said sometimes for the blue hour shots for the foreground I angle the camera down a bit maybe I zoom in a bit I think I'm still staying true to the scene as I said it's more technical thing for me shooting 15 millimeters also a bit more stars so I got everything put it together if you shoot the stars in the middle of the night because yeah it's another time of year Milky Way is just not where you want it in the morning then yeah the thing you have to do is take very long exposures with a medium ISO also in the night maybe use light point, uh, painting uh, for me the quality of the images I get that way is just usually not where I like it to have or to be which is why I prefer to shoot night photos when the stars the Milky Way is at a place that I can shoot it in the morning or sometime in the evening so I can combine it with the blue hour shots I took in the evening okay let's have a final look at the list I think we got through I hope you found this interesting I also have a very detailed article on my homepage which I link below there I have everything written down, all the settings explained and yeah, if you like the video, give it a like, leave comments if you have questions and yeah, now it's just time to show you the final image of the morning and see you in the next video. Bye.